I might upset some people with this video, but it is what it is, I guess. Hi and very welcome! My name is Mary, this is my channel Lumi Level Up and I'm a luxury lover on an average income trying to be more mindful with my money. Therefore it might sound somewhat ironical that I bought a Dooney and Burke bag that I do not even like. But of course there is a story to it and I think it all will make sense if you let me tell you the story, take you along with me in the story how I got to the bag and why and why I don't like it and why I still bought it and all that jazz. But let's begin right from the start. I think it's soon going to be two years that I bought my very first Dooney and Burke bag. And back when I bought that bag, I still do have it with me, the Embla. I didn't know nothing about the brand at all. I never even heard of it because it is not promoted and sold that widely in Germany. And I found that bag for I think 18 euro at the flea market, which is a great price for a full leather bag. When I touched it, I immediately was able to tell that this is very well made. The bag is very heavy, the bag has very nice stitching and a whole lot of compartments and organization opportunities. It does come with a long shoulder strap as well. So I knew the bag is well made, the price was good and I was intrigued to find out more. Bought it, talked to you about it and quickly learned that there seems to be a whole Dooney and Burke community that loves these bags like crazy, which might make this video a little bit critical because I bought a bag that I do not like that much. So what can I tell you about the Embla that I had for nearly two years in my collection now? I did wear it every once in a while. When I did so, I did enjoy it, but I did not wear it that often because I kind of forgot that I do own it. That's unfortunately the thing. If you have so many bags, some of them might not get the use they deserve, especially if it's not one of the bags you are madly, crazily in love with. So I even did consider to sell it on just because I think there are people out there that would give more love to that bag and wear it more often and it would deserve it because it is really, it is so well made if you can handle heavy bags because there's definitely some weight to it. With that being said, my first Dooney and Burke bag was quite a pleasant experience, especially since I bought so little. And my second Dooney and Burke bag, which I'm going to reveal in a second, well, I found that one at the flea market as well. And the price of that second bag was even better. And when I saw it, I immediately knew mm, it's not really my taste, it's not really my style. I think it's somewhat old fashioned. It looks like an old lady bag to me. So sorry, so sorry. The lady selling the bag actually was an older lady. I would guess she was in her 60s. But when she said the price, I just, I couldn't leave it behind because as well as this is a well-made bag, the other one is a very well-made bag as well. And well, I'll just show it to you before I ramble on. This is my newest, my second Dooney and Burke bag in a nice shade of red. I actually do like the color. And yet again, this bag is very well-made. There is so much detail. It even has feet. Come on, it has feet and tassels. And it is so nice from inside. How could you not? How could you not? With a shoulder strap, yet again, a zipper. It is a super heavy bag, yet again. And even the interior is very well made. We have this green suede and fabric red interior. From the inside, it looks hardly worn. From the outside, there are a few minor scratches that you can spot. And it seems like this bag still is sold at Dunienburg, which, well, already with my Embla was the case, which gives me a little bit of the impression that they try to create very timeless bags, that they put the designs out and then they are available for years and years and years to come, which is a approach that I usually would highly enjoy and think is a great thing. But uh, whilst the camera bag is a very timeless bag shape to me, this satchel, I don't know. Is it just me? Is it just me or does it look somewhat outdated to you as well? I don't mean to offend anyone. I know we all have different tastes and if you love that shape, I don't blame you. I mean, I don't even like it and I had to buy it because it's so well made. 
The lady asked for 10 euro and since it's normal that you haggle a little bit at the flea market, I asked for eight and she agreed. Come on, how could you not get that bag? It seems to be the Florentine Satchel, which retails, I didn't really understand that, between 386 and 515 euro. Does it depend on the leather? Ah, no, now I get it. It's regular retail 515 and currently on sale for 380. And at the moment it's not sold in that red color, which I bought. Already had that same topic with the blue bag that I bought. The, the style was still available, but not the color anymore. Excuse me, what should I do? What should I do Ugh. when this is a 500 euro bag and I bought it for eight? I had to buy it. Now I'm not entirely sure what to do with it. There are different options. I might sell it on myself because there definitely would be the possibility to earn some bucks. Option one. Option two, I might gift it to my mom because she loves oranges and reds a lot and she is an older lady. So I think that bag would suit her very well and she would like it very much. And the problem is just that my mom already owns a lot of bags and I'm a huge bag enabler. I gift bags to my mom a lot because I just enjoy them so much and she enjoys them quite a lot as well. There are quite some occasions when I gift bags to my mom all the time, but I think this is... This is a great bag for my mom, so that might be an option. And idea number three might be that I could start wearing it and see how I like it, because probably mentioned five times by now already, it is a well-made bag and maybe I should give it a chance, because it seems very roomy as well. I don't think we have to try what fits, because I think most probably everything will fit, unless a laptop, so it's not a work bag for me. Let me model it for you real quick. I think this is the regular size and there is a large version of that Florentine satchel as well. And it seems like you can fold that part. At least that's how it looks on the pictures, but it's not that easy. So you do not have that much room for the handles. You could put your arm through it, but uh, I definitely could not carry it on the shoulder, but Dooney thinks of everything. Here we have a long shoulder strap which has a very nice crossbody length, even on me with my five foot 11 and one meter and 80. And I have to admit, I have to admit, it is giving slight Louis Vuitton Speedy B vibes from the shape, isn't it? And I love the Louis Vuitton Speedy. Why, why don't I like that shape? So maybe I should just give it a shot, start wearing it and see if I fall for it. I think no one in the comments, even if you feel offended because I said I didn't like that bag, no one will not understand that I did buy it for eight euro, I guess. Now we have to see where the journey between me and the bag is going to. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time and bye. When I decided that I want to film today, there was bright sunshine. And as soon as I had everything set up, rain, darkness, winter mood again. When will I get the nice light? Dooney and Bag Berg. <laughs> Some of you might know that I like to match the topic of my videos with my looks and outfits and pink nail polish, red bag. Ooh, that was not well planned. Not well planned at all. <laughs>